Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 craziest music examples of the Mandela Effect. I sold 2008, you sold 2008. For this list, we'll be looking at facts about music and musicians that have supposedly been misremembered by many of us. Which one of these was the biggest shock to your system? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 20. Eternal Flame by Debbie Gibson While many of you might know that Eternal Flame was a song by the Bangles, there are a bunch of us who will swear to this day that it was Debbie Gibson who sang this number one hit back in 1989. But swear as we might, that doesn't change the fact that it was always the Bangles. To be fair, we may all just be getting it confused with the slightly similar sounding Lost in Your Eyes. This Debbie Gibson song came up just two weeks earlier in 1989 and also rose up to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Number 19. Wonderwall Lyrics there are a couple of lyrics in this one that some folks seem to have been singing wrong for decades. The song opens with, today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. And not what some of us remember as, today is going to be the day that it all comes back to you. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. The next misremembered line comes just a second or two later, as Liam Gallagher sings, I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. However, as one Reddit user posted, the lyrics as they remembered them had always been feels the way I feel. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Other posters pointed out that the second feel would ruin the rhythmic melody and argued in favor of do. How do you remember the lyrics? You're my wonder wall. Number 18. How many souls is Jewel singing about? Sometimes, one little letter can make a big difference. And in the case of this 1996 Jewel hit, that letter is S. But who will save your souls? This Mandela effect can go one of two ways. Either you know the song is called Who Will Save Your Soul, and you remember the lyrics being the same. Or you remember the lyrics properly as Who Will Save Your Souls. She sings it non-pluralized just twice at the end. And have always thought that, too, was the name of the track. Either way, we will admit that naming the song differently from the majority of the lyrics does set people up for failure. Number 17. Pumped Up Kicks Release Year the band Foster the People formed in 2009 and, in 2010, released their debut song, Pumped Up Kicks. Those are the facts, but that isn't what everyone remembers from the time the song first hit the airwaves. And we're not talking a few years off, either. As multiple people have posted online, there are those who have a very clear memory of the song coming out in the 1990s. In fact, one person was so convinced of the idea that they said they knew every word as a kid in the 90s. Number 16. What is the rain doing in I'll Be There For You? If you're a Friends fan, it might just be the song you've heard more than any other in your entire life. I'll Be There For You by the Rembrandts was the show's theme song for 10 seasons, and we've all heard it so much that we can sing along to every word. Or can we? In the chorus, after the first line, I'll Be There For You, what's the line right after? You aren't alone if you said, when the rain starts to fall. However, the actual lyric is poor, not fall. I'll be there. Listening to it now and hearing the, like I've been there before, follow-up rhyme, poor is obvious. I'll be there for you. Like there for you. 
but for many of us, it hasn't been obvious for the last three decades. Number 15. What does the old man want Billy to play him? We can all picture the opening scene of Billy Joel's Piano Man. It's 9 o'clock on a Saturday, and sitting next to Joel is an older gentleman really enjoying his tonic and gin. Then the old guy asks Joel to play him something. But what? Many people will tell you he asks the piano man to play him a melody, and that would make sense, of course. But it wouldn't be very poetic, as opposed to the actual lyric, which says, Son, can you play me a memory? Son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure how it goes. Later on in the chorus, the word is used in the line, Well, we're all in the mood for a melody, but not in the opening verse. We're all in the mood for a melody, and you've got us feeling all right. Number 14. What are sweet dreams made of? The full title of this 1983 song by the Eurythmics is Sweet Dreams Are Made of This. And unlike the Jewel song mentioned earlier, Annie Lennox sings the lyrics exactly as they are presented in the song's title. Sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I to disagree? Yet listen to people sing along with the track, and you'll no doubt encounter plenty of belting out, Sweet dreams are made of these. Maybe it's the way Lennox pronounces the word, or the subsequent rhyme with disagree and seize. Sweet dreams are made Even knowing the truth, we'll admit that we still hear these. So maybe this is less Mandela effect and more of a case of mishearing. What do you think? Number 13. Basket Case Misgendering In the second verse of Green Day's Basket Case, Billy Joe Armstrong sings about going to a shrink and then to a slur we won't repeat here. I went to a shrink. Many remember this latter person he goes to as being female. However, listen again and you'll hear that the lyric is actually, He said my life's a bore. He said my life's a bore. This seems as much of a Mandela effect as it is a misogyny effect, with so many automatically associating sex workers with the female gender. And not only does Armstrong flip the stereotype on its head here, but listen to the previous lyric and the shrink is referred to as she. she says it's, like upset, it's, me down. it's a wonderful subversion of tired assumptions. Number 12. Gangsta's Paradise Pronoun As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. The refrain on Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise is one of the most recognizable in all of hip-hop. But would you believe you've probably been getting a crucial word wrong this entire time? For years, we thought it was been spending most our lives living in the gangster's paradise. But it was actually there. This might seem like a fairly minor mix-up, but considering how it shifts the perspective of hook singer LV, it might very well shift your perspective of the song overall. I guess they can't, I guess they won't, I guess they front, that's why I know my life is out of luck, fool. This might be the most shocking version of the song since Weird Al made a parody of it. We're just plain and simple guys living in an Amish paradise. Number 11. Smooth Criminal Strikes Us You've been hit by, you've been hit by? As hard as it might be to believe, one of the King of Pop's biggest songs of all time isn't remembered as clearly as we might have thought. During the first chorus for Smooth Criminal, Michael Jackson repeats hit by, but many of us remember him saying hit by followed by struck by. You've been hit by, you've been hit by a smooth criminal. Fortunately, he does say the word later in the song, but the next time you try Smooth Criminal at karaoke night, keep this lyrical difference in mind. That is, unless you're doing the Alien Ant Farm rendition. Number 10. Who sang Cats in the Cradle? Cats in the Cradle is a classic 1974 song by Harry Chapin about the relationship between a father and his son. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. The song earned Chapin a Grammy nomination and was his only number one hit. 
However, maybe it's the cat in the name. But ask around, and you're sure to find those who are convinced that the track was written and sung by Cat Stevens. And the cat's in the cradle and a silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. Now, the truth is that Stevens did have a great song about a father-son relationship, but that was 1970s father and son, not Cats in the Cradle. Number 9. Barbie Girl's World Since the lyrics to Barbie Girl aren't particularly deep, it's a little embarrassing that we had one critical word wrong all this time. The chorus is not, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world as we had always thought. It's actually in the Barbie world. The Barbie girl in the Barbie world. Did we think that there were multiple Barbie worlds and that aqua vocalist Lena Neustrom was singing about one in particular? We don't know, but we do know one thing. We can't get Barbie girl out of our head. I'm a blonde, girl in the fantasy world. And we bet you're singing it now too. Number 8. Who's by the Record Machine in I Love Rock and Roll? While we all love Joan Jett's rendition of this song, we haven't been paying as close attention to it as we maybe should have. In the original version by British glam band Arrows, the line is, I saw her dancing there by the record machine. Saw her dancing there by the record machine. In Joan Jett and the Blackhearts version, the gender is swapped, so a woman approaches a man, but the verb stays the same. However, many people seemingly remembered the word stand in over dancing as the verb being sung in the line in question, and apparently cover versions exist with these words switched as well. So we also assumed Joan did the same thing. While she definitely has a reputation for rebellion, Jet also adheres to tradition when she wants to. Number 7. Knowing the lyrics to How Deep Is Your Love How deep is your memory of this Bee Gees ballad? Your eyes in the morning sun I feel you touch me in the pouring Probably not very if you remember a key line as need to know. During the chorus, the brothers Gibb indeed ask the titular question, but the next thing they say is really mean to learn, not really need to know. The second sounds a lot more natural than the first one. However, we're not one to argue with success. Breaking us down. When they all should let us be. How Deep Is Your Love started a streak of number one hits for the Bee Gees. It was also immortalized through its inclusion on the blockbuster Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. How deep is your love? Number six, where are the dwarves high hoeing to? Warning, we are about to blow your inner child's mind with this one. Hi -ho, hi -ho. Many of us have, at one point or another, headed off to work and on our way, busted out the hi-ho chorus from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Or maybe you did it as a kid on your way to school. Same difference if you ask us. Either way, you probably sang, hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. But wait, those aren't the lyrics. Hi -ho, hi -ho, it's home from work we go. This is how we've all been singing it our entire lives. But in actuality, the dwarfs sing the chorus at the end of the workday as they are heading home. It's hi ho, hi ho, it's home from work we go. Kaboom. Number five, we are the champions ending. Try to sing the last part of Queen's We Are the Champions in your head. It should always end with of the world, just like all of the other choruses do, right? However, this classic anthem ends on a bit of a cliffhanger in at least one recording. On the studio album, News of the World, the outro repeats the titular refrain without the extra phrasing. We are the but they did use the Of The World ending for other performances, such as during their legendary Live Aid set in 1985. 
Maybe Freddie Mercury didn't think it was necessary in the studio and figured the listener could fill in the gaps themselves? Number 4. Pretending to hear California Dreamin' Some of these lyrical misconceptions are cleared up by listening to the song in question. But in the case of the Mamas and the Papas' California Dreamin', it might only make things more confusing. For some, a crucial moment on this Sunshine Pop classic goes, I began to pray, but others hear I pretend to pray. And some listeners hear both words at once. The official lyric for the song seems to be pretend, but some still hear it as began. Whatever the word, we can hopefully all agree that California Dreamin' is a song we will always cherish. Number 3. When Miss Jackson Was Released You can't talk about the 90s and hip-hop without talking about OutKast. And you definitely can't talk about the Atlanta duo without talking about their hit song, Ms. Jackson. I pray so much about it, need some knee pads. It happened for a reason, one can't be mad. So know this, know that everything's cool. A few fans feel it came out in the 90s, along with other outcast singles like Elevators, Me and You, and Rosa Parks. But Andre 3000 and Big Boy's first number one hit actually came out in the 2000s, specifically the year 2000. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. Jackson. Ooh, I am Nonetheless, a few people and at least one Redditor remember it from the previous decade. But we're sorry to say this track came out later than you might think, and we are for real. Number 2. Band Names Without The on Album Covers We hate to be pedantic, but you might not be referring to some of the most popular bands by their correct names. Instead, you might actually be adding an unnecessary the. If we're going by album covers, the band behind Desperado is Eagles and not The Eagles. Likewise, you may want to start referring to them as Carpenters and Ramones instead of adding the potentially superfluous article. But we think either version is acceptable, and in some cases, adding the can prevent potential confusion in conversation. But what matters most of all is the music, right? Hey, ho, let's go. Hey, ho, let's go. Hey, ho, let's go. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Boom Boom Pow's Lyrics and Release Year a lyrical mix-up for this Black Eyed Peas smash hit has also led to a release year mix-up. Many remember Fergie saying, I'm so 2008, you're so 2000 and late, which would place this song in 2008. However, that's not the year she's referring to. She actually says, I'm so 3008, showing just how far off she is in the future. I'm so 3008, you so 2000 and late. Boom, boom, boom. boom Boom Pow actually came out in 2009. However, some listeners have recollections of hearing it in 2008 or even earlier in 2007. If it's still being played in the year 3008, we wonder what the people of the next millennium will think of it. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.